Okay, can everyone calm down? <laughs> we're going to have the report back now from the round tables. Okay, and first we're going to hear back from how repositories are being used for the REF and repository advocacy. Thank you. Uh, three minutes, good, okay. So my name's Neil Stewart, I'm from City University, for those of you who don't know me. So we had a very wide-ranging discussion of all matters, REF and repositories. Um, there are a few things that we thought we should kind of report back on, which is what I'll do now. Um, first of all, there's a, a recognition that the institutional repository could be seen to be only um, for use for the REF, so it could kind of crowd out other useful things that uh, the repository can do, not least, of course, open access. So that's, a, that's a, a risk and one that you need to mitigate by keeping open access at, to at the top of, the, uh, you know, of your advocacy efforts and of the university's agenda. Um, we went on to talk about the, the problem of managing REF submissions to avoid spikes and being able to, to manage the work in a useful way so as not to, um, so as not to overwhelm uh, the repository with material at any given point. Um, there's, there's the perennial problem of academic engagement, so keeping academics engaged perhaps um, after a call out for REF purposes has been and gone, and keeping, them, keeping the repository on the agenda of academics is, is always difficult, not least in REF terms. Um, Keeping allies in the research office is obviously very important. That's not always an, a very easy relationship necessarily because you're um, uh, both under a lot of pressure when it comes to the ref and that, that can be tricky. Um, we, we talked a bit about the possibility of automatic data harvesting from Web of Science and Scopus and other big uh, citation databases. Um, and we talked about the problem of uh, perhaps scant subject coverage for, for non-hard science-y type subjects and how, how you might get, get around that and that essentially there's no easy, no easy answer for that. Um, we thought that the REF is a very good opportunity to kind of do backfilling of the repository to um, get a good back run of material and try and make your repository as complete as is possible. Um, and the, the REF and REF submission um, provide a good opportunity for, for uh, repositories to do that. We talked about some, that we then went on to talk about some classic kind of information science problems about disambiguating um, authors. So um, the problem of authors perhaps sitting in multiple departments, academics with, with many different affiliations and how you go about dealing with that. Um, and the, the classic problems, the problem of um, splitting and merging departments and how you, how you deal with that for ref purposes. 30 seconds, good, okay. Nearly there. Um, so, sorry. So, uh, th generally speaking, I think we were upbeat about the ref. We, we recognise there are some risks inherent in uh, having to deal with it uh, with such a big thing for the university. Um, but we also thought it was actually a massive opportunity for libraries and repositories to be involved with this kind of work. And as long as the ball isn't dropped, then um, it can really put the repository at the heart of the institution. And this, this was a really good thing, generally speaking. The, the final caveat, though, is that one must never lose sight of open access and the fact that repositories are about open access. That should be their first thing. They're not really necessarily current research information systems, so don't lose sight of open access. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to hear from Peter about mapping the repository landscape. Um, okay. Um, so uh, our, our discussion was all about this graphic, which I think is the right way up. And um, it was a way of mapping the research landscape to see whether we'd understood and we were testing our understanding with the group that we had. Essentially, there's a bit here to do with the PI, Prince Investigator, and their cosy relationship with getting lots of money out of the funding councils. There was the authors, who sometimes can be quite separate people, doing things with publishers and being their author's final copy being extracted from them by whatever manner or means. The extent to which author's final copy and publisher's final copy were the same or not the same and are there different considerations. And this all-important stuff we just heard about the ref. 
So I'm, after some general discussion and pointers as to what was missing, what could be put into this, we had ourselves split into two groups, one of which was essentially was about research information management and the PI Research Council relations, and looking at that workflow and seeing what, would, what is being generated in that workflow, what would make it more efficient, um, typically an idea that if uh, the metadata package from the funder was delivered to the, to the um, institution, they wouldn't have to type in the reference number and get it wrong. Um, and then also uh, ways in which the PIs could behave better or not, uh, since they were the superheroes and pussycats, um, and the extent to which institutions knew what they were doing or not what they were doing, but also recognizing that PIs and authors um, typically may straddle different institutions. And so we sometimes will miss out what's happening in a different institution if we focus too closely upon only the research award that's given in a given institution. Also the notion that if we focus too much upon the flow of um, publications and other stuff that comes from funded research activities, we might miss out on the research activity and publications that come out of researchers who are not thereby funded all the stuff, the desk work, the rest of it. So we shouldn't close our eyes to what goes on in institutions, which is important for open access. The second area was, uh, the second group talked on um, uh, the authors, open access, publishers stuff, all of the traditional stuff that we do, and um, an understanding that if we only concentrate on the literature, then we don't really understand what to do sometimes with the other research products. But caveat was that if you try and include everything on the picture, you can't see it. And also that if you go into research data through research literature, you might find that you've got a biased view. You've got to actually come at it as a partial in, in lots of different ways. Okay, and finally, we're going to hear from Mark about open scholarship principles. Uh, hello. Um, our our re reporting was done on online, um, but the, the screens are off just now, so I'm going to kind of look at my laptop while I while I talk to you. Um, but if you're if you're interested in looking at what we came up with, it's available at okfnpad.org/r-fringe11-open-scholarship. Um, I think the, the main thing we came up with was there's still quite a lot of questions to look at around uh, um, uh, what is open scholarship and what are the definitions of open scholarship. Um, but uh, we tried to, uh, towards the end, kind of overcome the problems of uh, different communities and the different uh, perspectives on, on how you publish and on how you um, uh, find the information you're looking for um, with five uh, uh, sort of, uh, 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 I guess, points that, uh, that we would hope to uh, aspire towards anyway. So uh, the first one we got was open scholarship is a move beyond open access um, so we're not just talking about how to um, make something available, but how to actually um, have a different workflow for making things in the first place. So uh, number two, it is a commitment to, provide, uh, to produce scholarly output with the intention of sharing it with the world. Uh, number three, open scholarship enables the ideal of scholarship by using currently available tools to the full for that ideal. And number four, when scholarship is open, the creative works of the world will be made freely available to everyone as widely as possible. And number five, open scholarship is scholarship for the world. Uh, so quite grand, right? Quite, quite wide-ranging. Possibly not agreed to, um, you know, in their current state because I just wrote them <laughs> at the last minute. Um, but uh, we'll obviously continue to work on this and to see how we can move forward uh, beyond open access to actually producing um, uh, the items of, of scholarly output as widely as possible for anybody that wants access to them. Uh, and that was it. Thank you.